Hello everybody and welcome back to our study in Nehemiah. It was great to see you all in church on Sunday. It was very different but it was a start uh, to our return back to normality. I hope to see you all again this Sunday. Please don't forget to register your place on our website. We need it for track and trace and we need to know who is coming so we can allocate seats um, to best fit you all in while still obeying the government guidelines regarding social distancing. Um, this week we are going to be taking a huge chunk out of the book of Nehemiah, chapter 5, in its entirety. I know this is not how I usually like to work, but it is all one uh, narrative, one section, so breaking it down would simply not make much sense. Um, so we're going to take it all as one, the whole of chapter 5. If you want to read it first, please pause the video and do that. Um, so what is happening here in chapter 5? Well, God's people, they have been rebuilding Jerusalem, the city of peace, Jeru Shalom, God's city of peace and love and justice and mercy and grace, God's kingdom on earth, the church. Uh, they have overcome persecution and threats and attacks uh, to do so and things are going well despite all of this going on around them. Um, they have worked very hard and have sacrificed much to build God's kingdom here on earth and that's an example to us all isn't it as we rebuild the church at Nodfa post lockdown. But this vigour to get the job done, um, it would seem from chapter 5, has caused problems within their social dynamic. Um, the Jews were all united as one people, all children of Abraham, one blood, one family, God's chosen, the church. They had all come together at great sacrifice to rebuild his kingdom on earth. Yet some were taking advantage of the situation for their own personal and material gain. We read here that they were lending money to their fellow Israelites, their brothers and sisters who fell on hard times because of their sacrifice to do God's work and they were charging them interest. And this was causing them to have to sell their land and their resources to cover the rising costs of their debt. Now, charging interest broke the Mosaic law. Uh, this practice was not what God wanted from his children. They were meant to be one big happy family. Um, God put this law in place because he, he knew that such greed would lead to problems and disunity, which it did. Um, in verse 1 of chapter 5, we see that there was an outcry by the people. They were really, really suffering. Um, why? Well, because they were being manipulated by their fellow man, uh, who were profiting out of their desperation, profiting out of the chaos. And as a result, the people were starving and even resorting to selling their own children into slavery to make ends meet, which is tragic, of course. When uh, Nehemiah heard about all of this, we read here in verse 6 that he was very angry, and rightly so. This is not how God's children should be treating each other. So we read here that Nehemiah was furious, but he was very wise. He was wise enough not to immediately act. Um, he, he did not want his emotions to drive any decision making or reform. Uh, anger never 
ever solves anything. So in verse 7, we read that Nehemiah pondered. He thought through the issue and then he worked out a solution calmly, civilly and rationally. We then go on to read that Nehemiah brought together all of the nobles and the officials who were responsible and publicly reprimanded them for their greed and injustice towards their own people. Um, he corrected them morally. Verse 9, he says, what you are doing is not right. And he also corrected them theologically. Again, in verse 9, shouldn't you walk in the fear of God? He then made them, in verse 11, ret return all that um, was unjustly gained. And then he made them all make an oath. Verse 12, uh, before God, not to do it again. Furthermore, Nehemiah then led the reform by example, which is very important. Although being, uh, verse 14, a governor himself, um, we read that Nehemiah uh, did not take what was allotted to him, but shared it with all the people because... Verse 18, the demands were heavy on them. So what we read here is that Nehemiah showed strong leadership. He showed compassion and love to those who were suffering. He did not let his emotion drive any change. He put things right in a clear and civil way and he forgave those who were in the wrong and that's important too. He carefully planned what to do and did what was right and fair and true by God. He did not sit on his hands but he put his faith into action and friends we are reminded here to do the same. As our country rebuilds post-lockdown, COVID-19 is going to leave a huge trail of budget cuts and mass unemployment. People on our doorstep in our own valley are going to suffer and they will be exploited. As a church, we must follow Nehemiah's example here and be responsive to the needs of our community. We can't be led by our emotions, but by God and his word. And we have to follow his example, Jesus' example, to bring these broken people to the truth. Friends, throughout the lockdown, we have seen many organisations and ideologies try and manipulate this crisis to further their causes. The media has been saturated with BLM, uh, Antifa, the transgender movement, you name it, everyone has been flying a flag for something during this pandemic. And as a result, we have seen protests and violence, we have seen riots and statues being toppled and cancel culture. Uh, there has been so much hatred in the world during the lockdown. Hatred from these people who are trying to claim to have the moral high ground. Meanwhile, the church, we have been quietly and diligently serving our communities in the background. We have been delivering food parcels and medicine and most importantly the hope of Jesus Christ into this broken world. We have respected the authorities, we have closed our doors when they said so and we have ran our services online during this lockdown. We have kept in touch with one another, we have loved each other 
through these most difficult times. By God's grace, we have led this nation by example, fighting for justice, not by storming the streets of London and kicking in phone boxes and torching cars and looting and setting fire to flags, um, all in the name of what we stand for. We haven't cancelled those who disagree with us on social media either. No. What we have done is we've worked diligently and lovingly. We have done what is right by God. Reforming our broken world with love and compassion. Just as Nehemiah does here. We are, as Christians, of course, outraged by any injustice and persecution. But as Christians, we beat this with prayer and with sacrificial service and by self-reform. Not by riots, not by fear-mongering and certainly not by hate. We don't cancel those who disagree with us. Rather, we serve them and we love them and we forgive them. And we show them a better way by our own personal example. And what is this better way? Or shall I say, who is this better way? Well, I would like to quote a tweet that I read the other day. And it says this. Do you want to join an exciting revolution where we end slavery, treat every race as equal, topple corrupt institutions, fight for justice, champion the oppressed, take a knee and create a better world by treating our neighbours as ourselves. If you want to join this revolution, well then follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Amen. Friends, he was the answer to civil unrest in Nehemiah's time. And he is still the answer today. COVID-19 is going to leave a wake of injustice and manipulation. People will rise up and cry out. We have been saved by grace to be salt and light in this situation and make a stand. Leading this nation by example, by following Jesus. Amen. God willing, I will see you all Sunday. Make sure you register online and reserve your seat. God bless.